like to describe today two versions of the light spectrometer that I've been developing here. The idea was to create a webcam spectrometer that can run the excellent Theramino software interface that is available on the web. The design I've been using is straightforward. You have a long tube which has a webcam mounted at the far end here and it has a slit entrance at the front to allow the light to come in. And the webcam is at an angle of maybe 30 to 45 degrees and also has a uh, diffraction grating of about 1,000 lines per millimeter which sits in front of it to create the spectrum. And it also uses a uh, diaphragm internally which uh, helps prevent glare between the entrance and the webcam. And it's a USB uh, device so it can just uh, plug and play with uh, the software um, which is available, which is the uh, excellent Theramino interface which we're going to be using today. Now I've uh, looked at two different versions of, uh, of this um, device. Uh, I, there were not that many webcams that are available uh, that are currently working with Windows 10 that, that I could get my hands on, but uh, the two that I used uh, were the uh, Creative LiveCam Sync HD, which is a 720p HD webcam. And uh, this first one, uh, it was very difficult to remove the IR filter, so this ended up being an excellent visible spectrometer and uh, had good resolution, maybe about one nanometer between uh, the peaks, which could be resolved and it covered a range of perhaps 360 nanometers to 660 nanometers. The second version that I looked at was uh, using this um, Microsoft LifeCam HD 3000 camera, which is another uh, 720p camera. In this version, um, I was able to remove the IR filter, so uh, this extended the, uh, the spectral range up to about 1,000 nanometers. So this allowed us to get some really nice uh, IR spectrums uh, on top of the visible light spectra that we were getting. So uh, that, that worked out really well with that one. So uh, I'm going to try and put these two versions available on my web store. But what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to show some sample spectrums and show how to do the calibration of these devices. So what I wanted to show first was the uh, calibration of the visible light spectrometer. So I've got the spectrometer right here. Uh, we've got it set up with a lamp on this side that's uh, um, a CFL type lamp which is going to give us our sample spectrum. So Theramino, uh, one of the samples that they recommend using is this spectrum of a fluorescent lamp and they give an example here in uh, one of their PDFs. And we're going to use this one to calibrate uh, our device. So uh, they recommend calibrating to uh, this green line, which is 546, and this blue line, which is 437. And we've got our actual live uh, spectrum here. I haven't turned the lamp on yet, but we'll see when we turn the lamp on, then we immediately get the spectrum of the fluorescent light, which is uh, in and around the same range. So uh, I'm just going to pull this over. They, are, they won't be to the same scale, of course, but uh, we've got a control panel here that allows us to adjust uh, a lot of the parameters for the uh, webcam. And uh, you can see uh, we're at 546 on this line, and we're at 437. So we're actually in the right place with our trim. But when we want to trim it, there's a, a trim button right here that allows us to adjust the scale. So you can see that these markers come on when you click on it and then you can drag them in different directions to uh, increase or decrease the width of the scale to bring your calibration lines into the, the correct point. So we want, um, we want our blue line to be around 437, so I've adjusted that one. You see this one's already at about 546, 545, but we can also adjust uh, the upper 600 to bring this one into scale. And you can see once we've uh, made our adjustments, then our spectrums match, and you can see we're getting fairly good resolution on the line, similar to their calibration graph. So the only difference being here that uh, some of the lines into the IR we aren't seeing because this is the visible light spectrum uh, with this particular one, which has the cutoff around 660 nanometers. So uh, we're getting a, a good match in terms of the, the expected spectrum that uh, Theramino describes on their website. Alright, so I've now switched this over to the, uh, to the visible IR version using the Microsoft HD 3000 camera. And I'm just going to turn on the um, fluorescent bulb. And we can see now 
uh, the same spectrum, but now we get lots of IR lines showing up here, all the way up into the 900 range. And these will slowly disappear as the bulb warms up, but you can see that there's much uh, broader um, spectral lines that we can uh, observe here, all the way up from, let's say, 370 to about uh, almost 1,000. And you can see they're starting to disappear there now. But we have to have the same uh, visible spectrum on this side as compared to the visible light version that we showed earlier. So uh, that's the main advantage of using this particular uh, camera without the IR filter. One of the things I wanted to look at was the spectrum of a neon bulb, and I, I happen to have one. This is, I think, an NE2 bulb, uh, just a simple little uh, neon bulb that operates on about 100 volts. And we lit this up and uh, shone it into the uh, slit of the uh, visible IR camera, using uh, with the one using the HD3000 webcam. And we got this very nice spectrum here. Uh, you can see all of these lines from the neon uh, emission going up into the IR range, so some of them uh, in the 900s. So uh, that was a great spectrum, and um, you know, we saw good correspondence with uh, what they were reporting for uh, neon emission in the Theramino PDF, so uh, I was pretty happy with that. Another spectrum that was quite interesting was this one that we developed with the visible uh, spectrometer. And this is looking at uh, two lasers. Uh, one is a 632.8 nanometer Heaney laser, and the other one is a 532 nanometer green laser. And uh, I've shown them both on the spectral slit at the same time, and uh, we got this very nice sort of pattern here that is, is quite useful for calibrating because you know what the you know, uh, wavelengths of your lasers are, so you can line them up with your system and, and see them quite clearly. So uh, that was quite quite good. One final thing I wanted to show was uh, how this device can be used to actually uh, look at uh, light that you can't see with the naked eye, like for instance uh, infrared lasers or uh, even remote controls. So I've got a, I've got a couple of remote controls here that I've just been playing around with and I'm just going to try and see if I can pick up the signal from one of these. And I haven't calibrated this, but you can see if I just point the remote at the, um, at the the slit, we can see that it's coming in. I guess this one's probably around 940 nanometers. It's uh, that's around about where we are on the on the thing. If I pick up a, a different remote, you can see here we're seeing the same thing. So this, these are just uh, television remotes uh, that I picked up from uh, the TV and the VCR. So, so yeah. Uh, this is uh, this is going to be great for uh, visualizing um, all that stuff that you can't see with your naked eye, uh, maybe some 785 uh, nanometer lasers and that type of thing. So uh, I think it has a lot of versatility in terms of use. So I'm going to be uh, experimenting with that more in the future.